welcome to Solid Quest, this is Ed and today I'm going to show you the unboxing of Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-earth by FFG uh, It came out recently, it's a Lord of the Rings game and I just had to get it I'm a big fan of the IP and quite eager to get uh, this one going um, I'm, I'm a big fan of apps in games as well as I've already said on previous videos so I'm quite curious to uh, see how they evolved in this aspect, everyone's a big fan of the app for Mansions of Madness. Uh, so this is kind of like, uh, I would say, spiritual successor of that type of implementation, at least. So um, quite curious to see how they evolved it and uh, adapted it into the Lord of the Rings experience with a, a more of a, well, it's not really a dungeon crawler, but a more of an outdoorsy adventure game um, than Mansions of Madness, which is more of an enclosed um experience uh mostly indoors i would say um this one has another some other few cool ideas with stuff that you will see once i open up the box so actually let's take a look inside get this plastic out of here this again is uh is another big one another big box from ffg the size i think it's exactly the same as the mansions madness game which is well a pretty big box i gotta say Again, not as heavy as it uh, might have seemed to be. So there you go, the plastic is off. So we have our cover here with uh, what seems to be Aragorn and Legolas and Gimli fighting some orcs, I would say some Urukai, actually not orcs. This is, I don't know if it's taken out from that ambush that they did. If you saw Lord of the Rings, I'm not going to spoil the, the movie, but you should have seen it by now, come on. Or at least read the books, come on, they're amazing. So, that's our heroes right here. Again, it tells you it requires a free digital companion app to uh, play the game. And um, yeah, let us let me show you the, the size of the box. Okay, so let's take a look at the sides here. So, on this side we have uh, the artwork that we have on the, the front cover, the, the you know, the, the main art of the game. We actually have uh, a vertical side this time around. We didn't have one on mentions, but they did one for this box if you want to store it uh, on the vertic vertically, which is very cool to have. Uh, this one is the same. And on this side, it's a vertical side, but with Aragorn here. Cool, very nice. So I, I prefer it like this, actually. I like having, you know, those different artworks on all the sides, but you're not going, they're not going to be showing, okay? So having four different sides, although it's very nice to look at, you can choose which one to place. It's not, uh, I mean, this is more practical. At least having one vertical and one horizontal, thumbs up for that. So we have uh, the back of the game here with the digital app again, telling you you need it, telling you which components you are going to get and uh, showing, you know, the, um, the map all set up in here. This is not the only board we're going to play with. The game has other types of boards, as you will see. So it's not just uh, a big uh, sprawling adventure on the outdoor uh, with a top view of a big map. It's going to, well, there's going to be a top views, but of uh, maybe more um, intricate stuff that you were than you were expecting. So this is a one to five games with a 60 plus minutes, I would say per session, probably. So. Let's get this one open and see the components inside of the box themselves. So I, I haven't played uh, the Lord of the Rings card game yet. So I hear the artwork is a... They use a bit of the artwork on those cards. But since I don't really know them, everything is going to be new for me. In terms of artwork, so if I look too surprised for it don't mind me it's just that well it is new for me so again we have a little bit of a notice here stop uh this is a fully cooperative games blah 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 but it cannot be played without the companion app so it instructs you to install that if you can again same stuff uh you can get it on the app store for ios the google play store for android available at amazon it seems as well and also the steam store for windows and oh there you go so Lord of the Rings living card game. So you can have it on digital even. And yeah, it's shame on me for not playing it yet. Um, so again, the FFG catalog, we're not going to take a look at this one. And uh, there you go. So we're presented with the two rule books, the learn to play one, 
which is much smaller than I was expecting. This, this is a 16 page rule book. And the last one is actually a quick reference. So that's cool. Not big at all, which is nice. Won't take you a lifetime to learn to play the game. So let's just go through this very, very quickly. Uh, this nice school looks weird. <laughs> Jesus, it looks really weird. So the component lists, two battle map tiles. Oh, I thought there were some more of these. Uh, we have the journey map tiles, some figures, some cars that do look pretty cool. How to camp uh, first campaign setup. There you go, the action, playing the game. So while well, Dimension of the Menace was pretty much all uh, explaining how to use the app in here, not so much. So that's cool. It actually explains the game itself. Um, it is a small font on the lettering, I gotta say. So watch out for that. Even though it's a small rule book, maybe there's more text than I was expecting. So some additional rules for enemies, blah, blah, blah. So there you go, app elements. Okay, so this is our rule book, pretty simple stuff. And then again, we have a rules reference. This one is pretty thick, nice artwork here. This is a 32 page rule book. Again, this is more, uh, let's say you need, uh, you need to know something specific to a keyword, to combat, to enemy activation, to journey, the journey map, the inventory, what everything is, how it works, which rules are related to that keyword. You can just look it up in here. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a big glossary of all the terms used by the game itself. So rules reference, you, you do need to, re I mean, you probably can um, pull it off, pull off like the first game with the learn to play only, just reading this, but you're going to have a few questions probably with rules when you're playing it, conflicting stuff, and then the rules reference is going to be precious. Uh, no pun intended on that matter to clear things up a little bit more. So. With that said, let's take a look at these game, um, the cardboard sheets here, which have all of these tiles. Uh, they do look nice in all of the tokens. So there's how many of these? There are seven. Okay, so not as many as in, say, Manchester Madness, which had nine. And now I know it because I just unboxed it uh, minutes later, <laughs> minutes before. But you're seeing this uh, some days after, sorry. But I had to put some stuff in between. So, let's get this plastic off. And there we go. Let's take a look at all of the, all of the tiles we get, all of the tokens in here. So, these will make up our map during the game as we are playing. So the app is going to instruct us probably to be placing these ones as we are, uh, you know, discovering our game world. These are, again, very nice looking, very intricate. Let's see, the other side is different. Oh, this one is pretty. So very cool looking tiles here. I'm just afraid that they might look a bit too similar, as you can see. But I mean, it is, you know, it, it wouldn't make sense to have like this aspect and then just go into like a snowy area it won't make sense so <laughs> while they do look similar they do look pretty i gotta say they look very nice this i'm guessing is some sort of forest foresty area some rocks and there's this ground here a few tokens and on the other side so it's oh this one is look this one looks really cool I don't know if you can tell all the little houses here. The the colors, color palettes was very well chosen. I gotta say it looks really cool. There's on this side and a big hole here. There you go. So this is the first one. Very impressed, I gotta say, again, with the artwork on the tiles. They are really stepping up the game on uh, on these tiles. I really like how detailed they are. There you go, some more of these, some tokens. Uh, these ones are for the, well, the other tiles that we will take a look at. Actually, let me remove a few. I'll keep them here just to show you how they will be used. Oh, okay, cool. So there's indoor stuff as well. I didn't know that, that there was also some indoors. 
tiles. Very good surprise here. Very nice. Let me remove another one of these. All right, cool. So a lot of variety already, I guess. I thought these were, were going to be all the same, all of all outdoorsy with the same look and feel to them, but no, there's different stuff, definitely. So a few more tokens here. These look nice. There you go. Some more tokens here for Sauron forces, I would say. I don't know what this is, but it seems like to be Gimli. Gimli, campfire, some barrels. Again, I'm going to remove them. And here another cave system, some more tiles for that cave system here. There you go. More of the same, I would say. So more outdoor tiles, but they have, you know, these little details in here that are, make them different from each other. So there's a big lake here, some ruins with a big stone arc, some bones of an ancient creature. This one has a little bit of a farm space with a few houses. So there you go. And on the other side, oh, we have some ruins. Ruins here, more ruins here. There's always these little spaces. I don't know what, if it's for objective tokens or something of the sort. There you go. Okay, so um, more outdoorsy tiles. There you go, a few tokens here. These banners, <laughs> I've seen something very similar before in City of Kings. This really reminds me of City of Kings. Uh, where there's the, the the banners for the depicting the enemies. I don't know what these are for here Like factions of enemies. I don't know, but it really reminds me of City of Kings Like at a first glimpse. Uh, it's weird. So a lot of ruins here. I like the tiles with the ruins. Look at this. They look really cool. I Like this art is good. It's very detailed. Looks really really nice There you go. Oh, this one is pretty has this little elven uh, building right here in the middle and it's elven for sure from the look of it I would say a little bit of a bog here like a marsh um, this is more of a foresty area and some more outdoorsy stuff more campfires and trees and I'm guessing these are the tokens that are gonna go in here in this space not really sure what for but oh well okay oh cool Little little town here, little village, more of a village, not a town. So another big hole, like a table. This is more of a statue thingy. Yeah, it's like a statue token. Uh, some more banners and other tokens. There we go. There's these ones. Again, more outdoorsy stuff. With a this one has a bridge here, okay, cool. Oh, this is a big ruin from a, like a castle. Yeah, unfortunately, there's not too many uh, indoor tiles, um, like a dungeon -y tile. Uh, unfortunately, I like, you know, I, I would like a good mix, maybe 50-50, uh, but we don't get that. But we do get these, which are really cool. I thought they were paperish, but no, they're thick cardboard. Okay, that's a cool surprise. So, basically, we're going to be playing um, on that big sprawling map, which is going to depict like a big region. And then there's going to we're going to be zooming in into uh, specific encounters. So let's say there's a fight. I mean, the fight isn't just going to be two miniatures on a big map. Uh, we're actually going to have our heroes here on these um, <coughs> these terrain tiles. I don't know what they're co they call it. Uh, but yeah, we're going to have, we have two types and we're going to be populating these. The app is going to tell us how to populate it. So let's say there's a wall here with like a statue in the middle, uh, like a square, you know, uh, this, I don't know if this is a fog or what this is supposed to be. So, but yeah, you're going to be basically placing things here and making, like making a scene. So let's say there were some enemies here uh, near this campfire and I don't know, there were some barrels and I don't know, some more this doesn't make sense but let's say there was a war crossing here so you're going to be populating these uh these tiles right here and then you're going to be fighting uh on this one as well so may maybe there's fighting on the overhead map as well 
but uh, mostly I guess you're going to be having zoomed in encounters uh, where, with a bit more tactic um, to face off a few enemies uh, on these tiles as well. So um, that's that's cool. So there's going to be diversity in that matter. This kind of reminds me, I mean, if you know Folklore, The Affliction, it's kind of like that, I would say, uh, where there's that big overhead map where heroes are traveling and then there's, uh, you know, a, a Folklore has a lot of these, uh, but they're not cardboard, they're paperish, uh, but there's a lot of them uh, where things zoom in on the action and uh, you're going to be fighting on these little um, more specific locations. Uh, Folklore doesn't have these things to actually make different setups. Uh, so you're going to have different items to maybe use or cover, stuff like that to hide, I don't know. Uh, so th these ones actually are pretty cool. So you can construct a lot of different scenes uh, with these. Yeah, so in terms of tiles and cardboard, that's it. We get it's a lot of stuff, I gotta say. And then we have, well, cards and miniatures. So let's take a look first at the heroes that we can use in this game. So we don't have all of the Lord of the Rings heroes, of course. We have a few that are made up. I think they are in, present in other FFG games, like the Lord of the Rings card game. But I don't know them, because I've never played again the card game. So I have no idea who Berevor is. Um, even though I, I know my Lord of the Rings stuff, I don't remember this character. So I think this is an FFG character, Bear of War. Ranger of the North, blah, blah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know her. But there you go. So I like the... It's a bit small, um, but that's okay. The, the Yeah, I'm talking about the small, the, the... You know, the hero reference sheet, the hero sheet board, whatever you want to call it. Here's Gimli. Kind of a relaxing look on him. Um, so with all of the stats, no idea what this is. Fear and damage. He's a dwarf. Yep, there you go. So here's Legolas. Not blonde, like in the movies. Actually much cooler looking than in the movies. There you go. We have Elena, who I have no idea who it is either. Probably might be an FFG character as well. We have Bilbo. So yeah, not Frodo or Sam or Merry or Pippin. You have Bilbo, actually. He does look cool. I like the artwork on him. And last but not least, we have Aragorn. <laughs> which <laughs> he's in at the Browning Pony. I think that's the name. Having a drink. So yeah, we have basically Gimli, Legolas, Bilbo and Aragorn from the canon, Lord of the Rings lore, and then we have Elena and Berevor, which are FFG characters, I assume. Um, so let's take a look at the hero miniatures. So they are in this, <coughs> they aren't in the, that gray color. Uh, the enemies are in gray, the heroes are on this uh, brownish color. I really like miniatures that have this color. I wish all of them would have this color. So this, I am guessing, is uh, Berevor, is it? Berevor, there you go. And here we have Gimli. Looks really cool. I really like Gimli's miniature. It has won me over. I'm going to be playing Gimli. Here we have Legolas. There you go. And here we have Aragorn. Looks, this doesn't look like Aragorn much. This is a weird Aragorn, I gotta say. Uh, we have Bilbo. He looks okay. And this, uh, I'm guessing, is Elena. Which is sort of a musician. She has that harp. And I really like bards. So I'm probably going to be playing Elena. And Gimli. And I don't know which... Which other I'll play. I'll probably do a three, three hero playthrough. But enough of that right now. We'll talk about the playthrough later. So we have bases um, for standees. So I'm guessing, yeah, those banners will be on the map. On the big map. And the miniatures probably on the smaller zoomed in encounters. I'm guessing these are for the banners or of the enemies. Kind of like in City of Kings, I, I would say. <laughs> yeah, it really uh, reminds me of that. So, again, let's take a look at the cards and I'll show you the miniatures for 
the enemies last. So there's a lot of cards here because, well, the game has a bit of a system here with cards. Jesus Christ, there's, when I say there's a lot of cards, there's really, really a lot of cards. Let me separate them by backs and I'll come back in a second. Okay, so there is a lot of card backs, as you can see by these piles right here. So I was just sorting them out just to, well, so that you guys just don't have to wait uh, while I do that on video. Uh, so there's these ones with this back here. So these ones, fire pit, statue. I'm guessing this is what determines what each <coughs> of those... Um, well, those props um, do when you place them on the zoomed in encounter uh, boards, not the big sprawling world map. Uh, so yeah, there, there's these ones, one for each of those uh, types of props. Then we have this deck right here, which doesn't want to come out. There you go. So it has this little back here. I'm guessing this is for enemy behavior. Oh no, the cursed injury, concussion. So this is for conditions, okay. Exhaustion, entangled, feeble, short of breath, fever, sudden sickness, poison, Jesus Christ. Putrid boils, deep bruise, laceration, crushed. Okay, so these are all conditions. Weariness, stuff that our uh, heroes can, uh, well, actually suffer while adventuring. So this is all bad stuff. There you go, so a lot of conditions. I don't know if this will be random or how they're going to be um, suffered. Then there's this little back here, which represents uh, bad stuff as well, it seems. So, Hill Will, hysteria, hysteria, Looming Shadows, Tormented, Cower. Okay, so, I, yeah, there's Fear and then there's Damage. So, yeah, this is actually the symbol. So, I guess this is stuff, for, stuff that our heroes will suffer once they achieve their threshold of Fear. So this is more of psychological um, bruises, I would say. So there's gloom and anxiety and greed, dark whispers, surrender, rage. So yeah, this is all psychological states that our heroes can, you know, become uh, like this and things will turn south from there, I would say. And these ones are more for physical damage. Uh, so physical injuries and bruises that they can suffer. So. These two decks are bad stuff. Then, what else do we have? We have this deck right here with this little hand here. Uh, so this is items that we can pick up. So there's a dagger, gondolian dagger, blood rice, shade breaker, a, uh, a lot of reused artwork, which is a shame, sword. So all the swords are the same. The staffs are the same. That's a shame, actually. I wish it was unique, but oh well, we can't have everything. So there's axes, there's arps. And there's banners, okay? So these are items, I would say, that we can pick up in our adventures. Then there's this, which are probably some goods. Yeah, torches, ropes. So this is, well, it's also items, uh, but more of an equipment kind of stuff. Some boots and handkerchiefs, old pipes and helmets and brooches and maps, tomes, rations. Okay, stuff like that. I'm guessing this is armor because, well, there's an armor in there. So, yeah, ring mail, travel garb, ranger cloak, cloak, blah, 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 blah. Again, it's a bit of a shame that they're all with the same artwork. I wish they were more unique, but oh well. And then we have this, this one. There you go. Hidden. So, emboldened, I'm guessing these are positive conditions, determined, yeah, so positive stuff that can happen to our heroes, so to bolster up their strength while adventuring, which is nice. Then we have these decks right here, I kept them separated, they came in in different piles, um, I'm guessing these are the cards for the heroes themselves that will make up uh, the, the decks, well not this one, burdened and distracted and watched, I don't know what this is. But look at the artwork, it's really nice. Again, I haven't seen it, I haven't played the card game. If you have, sorry, but I haven't. It's new for me and it looks pretty good. Uh, we have these ones, which well, I don't know what they're going to be used for. But then there's these ones, Title 3, Title 9. So I'm guessing we can win some titles, maybe learn some new abilities. Elf Friend and Mist Walker, Barrel Rider, 
So yeah, a few titles that our heroes can earn while adventuring probably is going to give them some abilities. And there you go, so then there's this one. And now, yeah, Aragorn 1. So this is the Aragorn as well, Bilbo cards, uh, Berevor. So these are cards that I'm guessing will make up our decks, our hero decks uh, of abilities and stuff that we can do. How we pass the tests is also using these cards. So this is, well, it's not really, you know, a deck builder, but there's deck building elements here. So um, these are the cards that, yeah, have the abilities for our heroes we can earn new cards and yeah uh, so there's one uh, cards for the hero itself and then there's for the role of the hero so we can be a pathfinder we can be a hunter a captain a guardian uh, there's a musician as well and what else a burglar and then there's basic cards i guess so we're going to be making a deck of cards that are related to the hero itself, the character, and to the rule that we want him to have. So we're going to be mixing these things up, then we'll be drawing cards from that deck to pass skill checks, um, skill tests, and uh, all kind of stuff, and use the cards to our advantages as well, advantage while com doing combat and all of those things. So there's a lot of cards here, I'm not just going to go through all of them, I, there's no point. There's a lot, of, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff here. But yeah, so that's mainly you're going to be, this is going to be your main engine to get your hero doing things. And then here we go to the good stuff, the miniatures, which you guys all want to see, I'm sure. So this is for the enemies. Let me just throw everything in here and try to pick up the individual stuff because I'm guessing there's going to be a few repeats. There you go. I've picked two repeats right off the bat. I don't know if this is, this does seem like a human, not an orc, so there's going to be human enemies as well. There's one in here, there you go, and another one just the same. Uh, what else do we have? This is the same, another human, but then here you go, you have an orc. Looks pretty cool, I like this one. Let me try to zoom in actually right now on the miniatures. There you go, looks pretty cool. What else do we have? We have these wolves. That look very nice as well. I like them. These wargs, they aren't wolves, they're wargs. Pretty big wolves, I would say. Uh, then there's this big ogre, or a troll. Actually, it's probably a cave troll. I don't know. Or maybe an ogre, I don't know. Well, it's a troll, probably. I don't know if there's ogres in Lord of the Rings, actually. I, think, I know there's trolls, cave trolls, and regular... Trolls, it's probably a troll. Yeah, probably. Not sure, but probably. Okay, so, oh, this guy looks really nice. This must be my my, my favorite. It's also, it seems to be an orc, or maybe a Urukai. I can't really tell the difference uh, here on the game. I don't know if they have Urukais, actually, or if they just have orcs. Oh, this, what is this? Is this a Nazgul? This is cool looking. I don't know if it is, but whatever it is, it looks very nice. It's really, really cool. I really like this miniature. There you go. I'm looking for unique stuff. This is not unique. I've shown you these ones. Uh, this one I've shown you as well, but not this one. So we have a bit of an archer orc. There you go. Looks cool. Uh... Another one of these cool looking ones might be Nazgul's. Another one of these. So there's quite a, a bit of miniatures in here. Uh, these ones aren't unique either. I've shown you all of them. I'm just going to take them all out, I guess. So another, two more, two, two more wargs as well. And yeah, there's no more unique stuff in here. I was looking for unique stuff, but there you go. So basically you have a few humans, you have something that looks like a Nazgul, you have this orc, the archer orc, and the one with two axes, you have the big troll guy. So, I mean, there's quite a few miniatures, quite a few, uh, quite a few unique ones. I mean, I'm guessing this game is going to be expanded just like Mansions of Madness. There's going probably going to be quite a few expansions for it, adding miniatures, adding 
you know, heroes, which I mean, I know everyone wants to see more heroes from the Lord of the Rings uh, IP. Uh, and yeah, um, Gandalf, I mean, I want, I want Gandalf. And I would very much love to see a... Um, Oh, I'm missing the word, the Balrog. That would be amazing. It doesn't seem to be on this box right here, but if they do something like a Moria expansion, please give us a Balrog. That's going to be amazing. But yeah, that's what we get on this uh, base box, the first box for the Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-earth, the new uh, bet, I would say, from FFG. Um, and uh, yeah, I like what I see so far. I really like the artwork. I like the overall aspect of things. I love the tiles again. They really knock it, knock that out of the park with the tiles. I love them both in here and Manchester the Madness. Quite eager to get into this one. Uh, I'll show it off in the channel as well. I don't know if you guys want to see a full campaign. If you do, let me know. Really, let me know. Uh, I I kind of want to do things. Uh, well, I want to play all of them, but uh, I kind of need your feedback as well. What do you guys want to see here? Do you want to see a full campaign? Do you just want to see me hop from game to game or maybe stick with a game like we did with Runebound and have, you know, a better and deeper showcase of a game, like a complete look at it? Uh, let me know. I would really, really, really appreciate your feedback on that matter. And uh, yeah. For today, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the unboxing. If you did, please do leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. If you're in, if you're interested in more solo uh, ga board gaming contents like stuff like unboxings and uh, well playthroughs and some impressions now and then. So yeah, that's it for me, and I hope to see you all in the next one. And until then, have some few and well not a few, have a lot of great games and uh, have fun with all of that. Okay, see ya, everyone.